We'll take our text from Psalm 37, the first two verses of that psalm. And they read like this, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Human nature is to fret. And this admonition is, don't do it. I've wondered, yesterday I noticed was a National Cheeseburger Day. Today is National Butterscotch Pudding Day. I'm not sure who assigns these days or who cares, but we know we passed Labor Day, and we know cutting, coming up is what is called Tominali Equinox Day. You know what Equinox Day is. You know what autumn is. That's Wednesday, by the way. But there's a moment in time where the plane of the sun crosses the equator. And Wednesday, if you're alert, at 1221, that is the moment of time where we move from summer to autumn. Some people celebrate that. And some do it in an idolatrous type of way. Not in America that I know of, but uh, we all acknowledge it and look forward to to autumn. I guess you do. Uh, whether you look forward to it or not, it's coming. So uh, we acknowledge that. But I wondered about when we think of these silly days. It's also today is also a talk like a pirate day. So if you do that, talk like a saved pirate. I'm not sure pirate and being saved are congruent. But it's also a wife appreciation day. How about we have a national fret-free day? Amen. I know that there, there is a national anxiety awareness day. I think it happens in uh, April, and it makes me anxious right now not to know exactly when that is. But uh, why not a national fret-free day? I tried to discover if that exists. It doesn't, so... If somebody can name these other days, you can be the one that names this day, and we could do that. But the ten- human nature is to fret. I've also wondered, having an active imagination at times, we hire, um, well, we know we could hire a, a carpet installer. We know we could hire a builder. We could hire a nurse. Uh, in in Portland, I drive by a place that um, there's a, they have an acronym name to help you remember what it is, but I can't remember what it is, but it's something about maids. So you have a maid uh, that you can hire to house clean. Why not hire fretters? If you could hire someone to do your fretting, that, that well, it, it doesn't work. We have to manage our own fretfulness or fret free fullness, and that's what this psalm uh, advises or encourages us to know how to manage that. So he doesn't just say fret not, um, he tells us how to manage that or the alternatives to fretfulness. And you heard it read in the scripture reading verses 3, 4, 5, 7, and 8 each begin with a word that uh, are triggers, if we can use that, to uh, provide alternatives to fretting. And those uh, five verses start with trust, delight, commit, rest, and cease. In, in this psalm, <clears throat> it's the psalm of David, and in my Thompson Bible, it, it offers the contrast between the happy, the happy state in the subhead of the Psalm 37, happy state of the godly, um, in contrast to the short-lived prosperity of the wicked. So in this case, David's fretfulness 
uh, was instigated by the fact that the wicked seemed to prosper, right. where he faced, a, faced a difficulties, though he attempted to live in a God-fearing way. And for the most part, he did live in a God-fearing way. He brought some troubles upon himself, and he lived with the consequences of those troubles for the rest of his life afterward. Uh, they led to uh, problems within his home, within his kingdom, and really within his, his entire life. He never did uh, live uh, as, as free from uh, trouble after his a sin in the matter of Bathsheba as he had lived before that. Consequences follow misconduct. Yeah. We, we cannot uh, get away from that. And that uh, led to some of uh, the reason uh, that he brought upon himself to fret. He had enemies out for him. He had family members out for him and literally um, out for him to, to do him in. So he had learned, though, to take steps that would alleviate that fretfulness. And that's, that's what we have here in this psalm. The Bible is beautiful in that it doesn't always only uh, diagnose the problem, but it offers a solution. And that's what this psalm does. So we have in, in this uh, verse 3, he says, Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou uh, dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. To trust God is to be confident in God. Yeah. This doesn't relate to self-confidence. Some people are self-confident, but that they trust themselves. We hear a lot about trusting the process, which may or may not be a good idea because a lot of processes simply don't work, and we've seen that over the last couple of years in particular. But this confidence, this trust is to be in God. Amen. And you cannot really exercise trust in a trouble-free environment, because in a trouble-free environment, you hardly need it. True. So troubles come, challenges come. Yeah. And those are what would cause uh, us with our human nature to fret, mm -hmm. to have an inordinate level of anxiety or stress, to worry about what's going on and what might go on next. I probably quoted before down here, it just, it just comes to my mind every time I think of worry or stress or fretfulness, it's, uh, I've heard it said, and now I've forgotten who, who this is ascribed to, but it's a worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it doesn't get you anywhere. <laughs> and it's so true. Yeah. I've told some people that, you know, it pays to worry because the things you worry about never happen. Mm -hmm. But once in a while they do, so I, I don't admonish anyone to, to worry. But instead, trust. Yeah. Because the Bible says to trust in the Lord. And if you, if you do that, you won't ever be disappointed in the fact that you did that. You might be disappointed in the outcome of life or circumstances, but your confidence nonetheless is in God. And you, if you trust in the Lord, uh, you are confident that he had it. He, he knew the best outcome. Mm -hmm. We want to trust the Lord. Trust empowers one uh, to live right when evil dominates. Mm -hmm. That's the, the point that David had learned. The wicked were prospering, and he, yeah. he felt like he had troubles abounding, and he did. Yeah. But the prosperity of the wicked is short-lived. Yeah. And the blessings of the godly go forever. So trust the Lord. Amen. You don't look around at those others. You, you look at, at God. Amen. When, we, when we look at others, we see reasons for discouragement, possibly, although we can look at others who will encourage us. That's mm -hmm. a good thing. Yeah. But trust the Lord rather than fret. 
That trust in God is what gave David confidence to go up against the giant Goliath, who was well armored, though David was not in the end. He chose to trust God. And he defeated that giant. So trust in the Lord <clears throat> instead of fretting. Verse 4, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. So delight in the Lord, not delight in adversity or circumstances that are grievous. In that adversity, in those circumstances, delight in the Lord. And he shall give the, you the desires of your heart. The desires being not he shall give you what you want. He shall give you the right want too. There's, there's no need to hang our heads in discouragement or in anxiety or in fretfulness. There are all alternatives to exercise, to overcome all of that. So trust in the Lord. Delight thyself also in the Lord. That delight in the Lord is what put a shout in the heart of David when he saw uh, the giant tormenting Israel. He shouted for the battle. He just simply saw a reason for delight that God was going to give him the victory. And he did. God will give us the victory too. I don't care how tall the giant is, how heavily he's armored, how ugly he appears, or good looking. Uh, it's irrelevant. We're going to delight ourselves in the Lord. He'll give us the victory. Amen. Verse 5, commit thy way unto the Lord. And, and uh, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring what to pass? Was my question. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring thy way mm -hmm. to pass. If thy way is God's way. Right. Sometimes we, we pray, oh God, uh, direct my way. Or direct my paths. Lead my steps. That's not a bad, those aren't bad prayers to pray. But we want God's way, not our way. We want God's steps, not our steps. So when we pray, we want uh, the Lord to help us to align our way and our steps to His, Amen. rather than Him adapting to us. And that's what it is to commit our way to God. Lord, do an intervention, and let it be your way and not mine. <clears throat> Excuse me. So trust in the Lord, delight in the old Lord, commit thy way. Verse 7, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him rather than fret. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. <clears throat> what does it mean to rest in the Lord? Well, it includes... Uh, patience. It, it's to be at ease. It is to be still and know that I am God. Mm -hmm. That's what it is to rest in the Lord. It's not uh, taking a nap. I'm not opposed to naps if it's not in church. But it's, it's to be, be still before the Lord. Rest in the Lord. Amen. Wait patiently for him. The Hebrews were encouraged to run with patience the race that is set before us and that seems to be a conflict because how do you run patiently? It seems like if you run, you're running fast. You're in a hurry. But of course, it's it's a marathon. That's another uh, thought entirely. But to to be patient is to rest in the Lord. We can never say like my mother did. My patience is wearing thin, and she would count to ten, which. I'm not sure what that did for her. But patience does not run thin. It can't. It's patience. Mm -hmm. At the point it begins to run thin, it's disappeared. Mm -hmm. So we, we are to 
rest in the Lord. We're to patiently wait, wait for him. And be still, actually the 10th the verse, and, and know that I am God of, of Psalm 46, actually. Um, and I will be exalted among the heathen. I, I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So be still and know that I'm God. Rest in him. And verse 5, or verse 8 rather, is the fifth alternative to fretfulness, and that is to cease from anger, forsake wrath, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Remember in context, this is David tempted to fret because of the enemies, but it's not about retribution uh, or vengeance. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord, I will repay. And we're not even praying, though the psalmist did at times, that God would repay those who uh, did him, uh, did them disservice, depending upon the, the author of, of the different psalms. And uh, there were prayers for God to visit the, the wicked with vengeance. But we'll leave that <clears throat> in the hands of God. We're not uh, interested in that. We right. simply want to survive ourselves. So we, uh, to do so, we are to cease from anger. It's hard to be upset over what God allows, what God orchestrates. So we, we can't be angry at others because uh, this is a spiritual warfare. Anytime we face adversity from someone, this is not about someone. This is about the devil. And when we recognize that, there's no reason to be angry at any one else. We, if we're going to be angry, we can be angry at the devil. But we're not going to dignify him by even... Uh, wasting our energy along those lines. So cease from anger, forsake wrath, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. We're thankful <clears throat> that we can, we can trust the Lord. Amen. The psalmist goes on to say in, in the, verse 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. We have every reason to, to delight in the, in the way, and that so the steps of a good man, it could be uh, also translated, as I recall, a conquering man, an overcoming man. It's um, in the original language, much stronger language than a good man. The steps of a victorious man are uh, ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. <clears throat> we delight in God's way. We, we have no reason to uh, fret ourselves because of evildoers. We have no reason to uh, fret, uh, have fretfulness as a result of anything in life. We have every reason to trust, to delight, to commit, to rest, to cease from any contrary spirit. And as we do that, we are categorized among those who are victorious, those who are overcoming, those who are pleasant to be around. We thank God for... Uh, his goodness. We thank God for this assembly this morning, for the privilege we have to have a song of invitation, to drop to our knees in prayer. <clears throat> we can look heaven's way and expect God to continue to give us victory.